Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I've got the Pi 15410, an Epix fast load cartridge here, and we're gonna build one today. Now, this is one of those projects that some people have had a hard time getting started on, and so I'm gonna give you everything you need, all the tips and tricks to get one of these built and up and running. And of course, this project was sponsored by PCBWay. I was able to get 10 of these boards, bought these out of my own pocket for about 10 bucks, and I ordered them with a whole bunch of other things, so it wound up being like five bucks shipping. And I had them landed to my door in just over a week. And so PCBWay helps me keep all these projects up and running and allows me to take all these retro computers and do very, very cool things with them. So I wanna thank PCBWay for sponsoring this project. So this project is actually two projects that have been crammed together. At the bottom, we have the Epix fast load cartridge, which uh, back in the day, the original 1541 drives were super slow and uh, various people came out with various technologies to um, speed it up. And the Epix fast load is probably the most well known. So one of the cool things about this project is you're able to use a lot of different sizes of EEPROMs. And I'm gonna make sure that you have the image to use basically anything from the uh, really common 64 EEPROMs all the way up to the uh, UV erasable 512s. And so I'll give you a separate ROM image for each of those. No reason to uh, try to do any kind of weird hacking of the ROMs. I'm just going to give it to you. Um, so this part of the project you can actually build separately and it's just an EEPROM and it is a 74 LS07 hex buffer and then there are two capacitors here. i have got a 100 nanofarad and then a little unusual for a project like this we've got a 47 microfarad. So note the microfarad. This can be a bigger capacitor and you can either use a polarized or unpolarized capacitor um, at this point. Now we also have a little bit of an odd value here, a 2K7, that's 2,700 ohms uh, resistor. So you'll need to make sure that you have that on hand and then um, that will get you started with the Epix fast load. As we move up to the top, um, this is kind of the big part of the project. This is the Pi 1541, and there's actually not a whole lot of logic going on here. Uh, we've got an LED optional uh, with a resistor that is listed at 470, but if you'd rather use something, uh, 330 will make it brighter. You know, 1K will make it dimmer. It just really doesn't matter very much um, there. We've got a reset button on the side, which you don't have to have, but that's handy. And then you've got five buttons here along the top to um, control the Pi 1541. Now again, uh, this project is made by C64 Istanbul and he does such a good job of allowing these things to be flexible. And so um, it's got a place to put an OLED screen that is long and has the connector on the side. It's got a place to put an OLED screen at the top that is more square. And then as you can see here, depending on uh, the layout, because the little pins at the top of the, at the uh, OLED screen change a lot, you can actually come back here and you solder different points, bridge them together based on um, which type you're using. So uh, that is very sweet. Now, the next thing you have to worry about here is um, this, and this is because the Raspberry Pi that we're gonna be using uh, runs on 3.3 volt logic and the um, Commodore 64 runs on five. So rather than building a whole bunch of circuitry, um, as we try to interface over here with the uh, with the computer, we're actually going to use one of these super common. And in fact, I buy them by literally the hundreds. Um, these super common logic level shifters. And so I've got this upside down here. So um, what this does is this translates. It takes the 3.3 volts from the Pi and the five volts from the uh, from the Commodore and actually changes the signal level so that you won't damage either machine, most likely the Pi. Uh, with that, um, you know, with that signal going back and forth. Now, um, there's a simple header here that you can solder and you can use two individual headers. You can use a double header, whatever you want to use there is fine. Uh, probably the most complicated part of this project is this connector right here. And uh, this is a six pin DIN connector that goes between uh, the board and the user port on the Commodore 64. 
I did one with a DuPont connector and it was a bit tight. Um, I'm going to probably redo it with a JST. My JST crimpers are actually not for the JST connector I need it for here. So uh, basically any way you can get five wires, six wires between here and the Commodore 64 will work. You can put a connector. You don't have to put a connector. You can uh, solder stuff. You can cut an existing cable. Uh, don't overthink it. Just get something that works. All right, so as I said, you can use a uh, part or all of this project. If you are just using the Epix fast load part, um, then you don't need the cable at the top or any of the other stuff there. But if you're using the Pi 1541, uh, you need to plug it in and you need to use the cable. And as I said, do not connect external power to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, as you can see, the gray cable here is going into the user port right there. Um, and so we are going to turn it on. I'm gonna give you an idea of the experience. So before we go, I want to say one thing. A lot of people find their joy in um, beating the game. And for me, I find my joy in beating the system, which means I don't spend a lot of time actually playing Commodore 64s. I love repairing them and I love uh, repairing all these other computers. And so projects like this one, you know, sometimes it'll get me for a while and I'll put it off to the side and then I'll come back to it and I'll battle it and battle it and battle it until I win. And then once I win, uh, then I'm going to come here and I'm going to tell you guys what I did so that you don't have to go through the troubles that I did. So that said, I don't know all the commands super well, but we're going to turn it on and we're going to play with it. So uh, when you first turn it on, you see a quick image of a um, drive on your screen, and then you're just immediately going to go uh, to some kind of little OLED screen. Now, the buttons themselves, uh, this selects, and then you've got up and down, and you've got um, this one backs out. So if, you want, if you're in a menu or something like that, you need to back out. And then this one adds it to a set, which I think is for adding to a disk set. Um, but let's just kind of let's click this for a second and you'll see that we can go um, up and down through all the files that are in that folder and the first thing we're going to do just for simplicity is we're going to select the fb.d64 and this is going to be the file browser and so as we click this you'll see that it says loading and then all of a sudden it's loaded um, now i'm going to back the camera up because that's really all you need to see on here and i'm going to show you the entire computer so as you can see, because I have the Epix fast load in there, it's automatically going to say fast load at the prompt. And one of the cool things about having that is that you can actually just hit Commodore run stop at this point to load the disk that you've just loaded there. That works 99% of the time, works 100% of the time. Uh, now you can use the keyboard to get around, but I prefer to use any kind of joystick. This isn't the best one in the world, but it'll, it'll do. But as you can see here, I can um, navigate around through a file browser and actually load the different things. Now this thing generally, um, you're gonna wanna look for files that have D64 in it. And uh, so we're gonna come up here to games and I've already got this game multiple places, but as you can see, I've got a couple of games on here, Boulder Dash and Command. I've got Gunship, which is kind of fun. Um, you know, so we're gonna come up here to, let's load the newer Ghost and Goblins. Uh, so I'm just gonna click the red button on here and it should load the disk and then it will give me a menu where I can actually just come down here and hit uh, Ghosting Goblins and run the program. So we can just hit the um, button to start the game. And this is kind of fun because it's got a trainer on here. So at least for this, uh, for this experiment here, we can change the weapons and all the other stuff but as you can see this thing works just like a commodore 1541 drive uh it's got a lot of features and things like that and it's a quick way to get your games going on your retro computer so we'll come up here and set invincibility and unlimited lives and unlimited time and uh, we'll allow buttons one to five to select our weapons and uh we'll go ahead and start the game And there we go. As you can see, it works just like a 1541. We've got weapons, we can shoot, we can jump, and anything you could do on your old drive, you can do with this one, which is what makes it very, very cool. So, hey, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and I want to thank you for watching, and I will have links to all the little details in the description that make this uh, thing more usable. So, anyway, just uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.